Hey everybody, uh, happy Sunday. I hope you, hope you all had a great week. This is Pam Duffy. I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. And if you're catching this on the repeat, what we're going to do today, I'm going to have a quick look at how to attach whiskers with a sewing in me method as requested by Sharon, who I see is here. So hi Sharon. Um, I'm going to show you how I sew in the whiskers. So a little bit of live crafting. What can go wrong? So I should probably put up like a blood warning or something. I'll probably manage to stab myself. I am that clumsy. And also I want to talk about what to include in your packaging. If you're selling on Etsy or if you're selling anything online, what things should you include in your packaging? This is something I've wanted to talk about for a wee while. And really amusingly, literally just seconds before I came on here, I was just scrolling through eBay, uh, through eBay, through Facebook, and this um, someone was already asking this question. So the two main things are looking at sewing in, whiskers for cats, just the different method, and what to include in your packaging. And we're also going to have a look at Cassandra Hall's Facebook page. And Cassandra's just joined us as well. So hi there, Cassandra. And really excitingly, sneakily, uh, letting you all have a sneak preview of what's going to happen with Cassandra. But me and her have sort of been working together as she's been starting her needle felting journey. And I think she's... She's got a project to share with you very soon and I'll have my little video on that coming up really soon as well. We've just been working together on a first project and you know, she's totally nailed it actually, totally awesome. I'm really impressed with what she did because it was quite a challenging project, but I'm not going to spoil any more. If you're not in, if you're in the Pam's Felting Friends group, then you'll already have seen what she's made so far. But for everybody else, it will be a good surprise and well worth looking out for. So just a quick look in the chat before we get started. We have... <laughs> Um, Sharon, Nails by Sharon and Cassandra are both in here so it's awesome to see you both especially when I'm talking about you. Um, Sharon it's exciting, it is exciting, I'm really super impressed with what Cassandra's been doing and I'm sure you will be too, it's actually really quite quite cool to see someone going right from the start and her videos so far if you haven't seen them already her videos so far have been so cool going from the first step of just making a ball and then making a tube and adding things together but I think she's really kind of picked up the basics so quickly because as you'll as you'll see when we poke about her Facebook page she's really very artistic <laughs> very cool at all this so this is something she's been able to pick up actually really well getting an understanding of how things felt down which direction to use the needle and I don't think she stabbed herself yet either so she's way ahead of me right uh, so let's get started with the kitten to start with and Sharon, yeah, I love watching people blossom as well. It is fantastic to see some of the needle felters and they start, and they're way better than I was to start with anyway. My my dogs were terrible to start with. But just to see how people grow and in like a few months, a year, a few years, from that first project to a project later on, the difference is amazing. But anyway, right. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm just... Gonna look at my screen yes see my little cat I'm not sure how great my little camera is going to be at focusing on this because I'm just using the webcam not the not the decent camera but this is my wee cat I've pulled off a few of his whiskers but these were the fishing line whiskers that I stuck in with a paver pole in my video this week and actually they've held up really well it took quite a bit of tugging to pull them out so that's perfectly fine um but Basically, Sharon quite rightly asked, I'd mentioned about the sewing in, what I've done with the horsehair whiskers. So quite rightly, I should have included that in my video, but I didn't. So um, I wanted to show this today. But the other thing that Sharon mentioned that I wanted to bring up here as well, it's super important and it's about the kindness or cruelty in using something like horsehair whiskers. I mean, obviously, 
If you're a vegan, then there are, you can use acrylic wool to needle felt. I'm not a vegan myself, so I'm not against using animal fibers, but I always try and make sure and get the kindest ones possible. I have some beautiful alpaca fibers that um, myself and my mom were on holiday in the Midlands and we went to an alpaca farm and we met the alpaca. They live on a beautiful hillside down a slope to a drinking water reservoir so it's all completely organic they're kept pretty much as pets and we, we checked in on all these things that basically you know if they're sick or when they die they're autopsied the vets look after them you know they're looked after as pets they're they're not their their fleece is a is a wonderful side effect of having the alpaca they do sell the fleece but they're there just to have a wonderful life so I couldn't you know I, I, I couldn't say there was anything cruel about them I was really impressed with how they looked after and when my fibers are trying to look for um, where I can I certainly I get non mute non mused I think that's how you pronounce it merino because merino can be a slightly more cruel fiber depending on where you get it from I also tend to buy where I can lots of uh, rare breed British sheep because British yeah British sheep fleece because um, there tends to be a higher standard for that but I always kind of check the the wealth the welfare of the animals because there's no reason for it to be a cruelty thing for the for the sheep I know I've got a lot of grief off for some people every now and again PETA put out misleading things about the cruelty to animals and I know there's cruelty that goes on but at the same time it's not all <laughs> it's not all cruelty you can find decent shepherds and that treat their animals well oh hi there dainty panda welcome I love that name dainty panda it puts a great image in your head and yeah for anyone wanting to check out anyone else's channel on the chat um, the if you hover your mouse over their name there's three dots on the right hand side if you click on that there's an option to go to the channel and that opens it up in a new window and that for for you mods it also gives you options to to mess about a wee bit as well it gives you options to put them in timeout and everything right anyway so this is going to be the tricky bit of how do I show <laughs> this on the camera without stabbing myself so we'll come around here so I've already threaded this and I'm just now as I say I used this with horsehair before but I can't find my horsehair um, the stuff that I got was from a friend of mine who it naturally shed when she was grooming the horse I mean I do believe they like they have to keep an eye on the mane and the tail a wee bit else some some horses it can grow a little insane I I don't know that much about the horses but it, it was looked after but after what Sharon said I decided definitely not to order some more and because I couldn't remember who had got it from before but I decided not to order some more so I'm just going to demonstrate this with some sewing thread which is obviously not going to be firm enough to stand up at whiskers but it will show you the idea so basically to do this how we're going to show it right little little upside down cat no we can get him the right way so you pick the side that the whiskers are going to come out right is that showing up yes and we're going to push the needle right from that side and right through to the other side and Keep pulling it until you just have the tail, the length of the whisker. Do you know that doesn't look too bad actually? Is that showing up? That looks pretty cool. And then you're going through just slightly away from where you where the thread came out. So you're just making a little tiny little tiny loop in there of thread. You're gonna push it through. Oh, it's catching on his ear. This is awkward. You're going to push it through and have it come out somewhere else on the other side where you would like another whisker to come out. And I'm going to pull this through. And then that gives you two whiskers and you're just going to trim that off at the length you want. That's my rubbish scissors, it looks like it's chewing it. So you just trim it off at the length you want and then you have two whiskers and actually do you know the sewing thread worked pretty good I'm 
thinking about using that. Um, could use that and maybe use a little bit of the paver pull to firm it up a bit. So genius, I, I thought that would be a lot more floppy than it is. So there we go, brand new, brand new tip, use sewing thread as whiskers. And actually, I can't even see where the loop, where the thread bent round there but if you do you can just felt a wee bit over it and I would actually felt just a little bit into there to hold it in place because um, obviously there's nothing really holding it there you could also add a wee dab of glue or something but I don't like adding glue to them so actually I think this method is a whole lot better than, than I expected um, but yeah that's actually <laughs> way better than I anticipated I thought that was going to be rubbish so there you go so I hope that makes sense to you all that's that's how I sew in whiskers and yeah I am going to use sewing thread I think you can get slightly thicker thread than this so I'm going thread shopping and yeah that works perfectly and I can barely see the loop where the thread's coming through so just a couple of little stabs and you've got some pretty cool whiskers. So you saw it here first. We invented a method together. And Sharon, thank you so much for asking me to explain that. You're quite right. I hope that made sense and you could see what I was doing. Obviously, it's a lot easier if I'm doing that on my proper camera setup, uh, live streaming just through the, through the webcam. So, yeah, it's a little awkward. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, yes, Sharon's saying, yes, yeah, she buys all her fleece from farms she knows because it's animals that are sheared nicely and taken care of. Exactly. It's so important to know. Most most farmers aren't cruel. Their animals are their livelihood. But if you get to know them, you see where the animals are coming from, then you know what kind of life they have and you can decide if that fits your morals. And that's fine. Uh, pay, oh, what is paper pull? I have a video on that, Cassandra. I'll link to it in the cards, which will be there in the replay. But this is paper pull. It's it's a fabric stiffener. It's supposed to be. Um, years and years ago, myself and my mum went to a craft fair and we found this stuff. They they sold it in massive tubs. It was so expensive. And what they were doing, it was it was a kind of cross between sculpting and textile craft basically they would take like a shirt or something and dip it in the paper pole and then drape it over some kind of mannequin form and then it sets in that kind of flowing form and it just looked awesome so we bought some of that and for ages I tried to get it to work and I just made a mess everywhere literally it was terrible and I was I had actually thrown it out and then I thought I might I'd never used glue in glass eyes I'd always had them with a longer wire so I bent the wire over at the back of the head of the animal but when I got the glass eyes off at of Amazon which I've reviewed before these little guys which are dirt cheap these are so cheap but they're really excellent quality um these little guys but they're on a shorter shaft so it doesn't go all the way through the body they're just little short things so i had to find a way to glue them in and i thought well this paper pole is supposed to supposed to be a fabric hardener I'll give it one more try so I got myself the wee bottle and I've tried that and that's what I've been gluing the eyes in lately no that's the cat's actually an older model he's got the eyes through the back of his head but I tried gluing them in with that and I was surprised just how strongly it holds in yes if I got pliers I could probably wrench it out but just pulling with my fingers that's not going anywhere and the other thing I was really worried about was having glue on the sculpture but you can't see it it just literally literally have I got a glued in well yeah here's a, <laughs> here's a wee guy but I'm just in the middle of making him obviously so he's at his ugly phase but you can see you can't really see anything of where it's glued in and it's not gonna come out um yeah so it works perfectly and Sharon's saying she uses it for the beaks of her hummingbird. It is fantastically good. I used it for the talons of my dragon. 
yeah, that was why I got it, to try with a dragon, because I tried sculpting out of an air-dried clay, and that was rubbish. Um, so if you check my dragon talons video, you'll see I use it there as well, because you can dip the little piece into the fabric. And then if you leave it, you can't, you don't want to touch it when it's totally wet, because the stuff gets everywhere. It's a mess. And also, I found the fibres of my sculpture would kind of be, as you're moving your fingers, the fibres are sticking to your fingers and you actually make it more kind of fuzzy. But if you just dip it, felt it nice and firmly, excuse me, <coughs> felt it really firmly and then dip the piece into a little bit of the paver pole. Don't try and put it on with a paintbrush or don't try anything, just literally dip it in and then leave it for an hour or two until it's nearly dry. And then I found with your fingers you can sort of sculpt it and smooth it out and it really really made a beautiful smooth surface and then I tried painting it to give it the grimy talony look and I put a glaze over the top and I was so pleased with how that worked out. A cross would cross stitch, stitch floss be thick enough to use for whiskers? It might be. I actually think I've got some of that somewhere, so there's an experiment to try. I'll dig that out and I'll let you know. Um, because this, oh, this just says black thread, and I'm afraid the end that might have told us what it was, I, I have a feeling that this thread met, <laughs> met some time with the dogs, so I have no idea what this is, so I can't tell you how much thicker we have to go but yeah cross stitch I'm sure I've got some I'll try that great idea okay ah yes so second point um I wanted to talk about including little extras into your parcels when you're shipping stuff to be to, that people have bought online. Now, if you let me know in the chat or if you're in the replay, let me know in the comments below. When you're shipping anything to customers, do you include anything? Do you put anything little special in the packaging? Paperwork, business cards, freebies, sweeties, promotional stuff? Do you put anything in at all? And I'll just give you two seconds to answer that while I drink, drink my juice. mainly because I'm going to cough all over the place. <clears throat> and I have to confess, I don't really put anything in my packages at all. Um, but this is a question that so many people ask. It seems to be in two camps that some people want to put hundreds of things in to show their customer how happy they are to have got, got the item and other people go with absolutely nothing. So, I've been thinking about, a lot of people have been asking about this, and I've been thinking about this, and I just wanted to share with you guys where I am on it. Like I say, I don't really include anything at the minute. Um, Cassandra's saying she doesn't ship things out, but she loves extra stuff, like hair ties with a shirt bought on eBay was a fun surprise. Okay, that's that's fair enough. Um and that's that's the thing is I think customers come in the two varieties as well. You know, half the time I'm like just wading through, going like, like that's junk. I didn't want that sent to me. <laughs> but sometimes if it's a nice surprise, and I'll get to that. There's been some things that have been really awesome. Uh, Carol, hi there. I could use twine. I also use invisible thread for the whiskers. Oh, I'll have to look that up. I am not much on the embroidery. I've done cross stitching years ago, but I don't know much about these things. So I'm going to have to head out to a haberdashery and have a poke about because it's not really something I want to be ordering online because like with the fishing line, I had no idea what I was getting. If there's different, I know there's different weights of it that are breaking strains, but I didn't know the thicknesses. So I'm going to go looking for things like that. Okay, so the stuff in the shipping packages. So I'm going to go to the worst end of the scale I can think of for an example, first of all. And that is people putting sweeties in their packets. And that sounds lovely, but really <laughs> that's the dodgiest thing on earth. Um, firstly, I've heard a few cases where pets get into packages. I've had it happen myself um, when I started with the needle felting. A couple of times people messaged and said um, 
you know, really sorry, but could we order another one? Because as soon as it came through the letterbox, the dog ate it. And basically, pat, pets are really attracted to needle felting things until they get used to them. Like, my dogs don't care about it at all. So if you're sending sweets in a package and someone's pets eating them a lot of the stuff that's okay for humans isn't so great for pets like obviously chocolate isn't so good but a lot of sweeteners as well isn't good um and equally a kid could get into it that's perhaps diabetic or allergic to peanuts or anything so don't send extra food stuff for that that it could be pretty dangerous and also i just think about it yeah, in the UK, like, UK to UK, first class, something should get there the next day or the next day or two. It's not too bad. But if I'm shipping to America and something's going to take, like, two to three weeks and it might be sitting in a hot post office somewhere, then all this stuff's going to melt and it's going to get minging. And, you know, even, like, chocolate, that's going to be revolting by the time it gets to you even just a day ship and if you send it in the summer that's going to be disgusting but even like boiled sweets um they could melt and get sticky and ruin whatever you sent with them so don't send food <laughs> um yes like a little head a little hair tie or something that could be kind of cute i just some people kind of almost fill it with <laughs> fill it with all the tap they've got lying around the house which can be a little bit annoying lots of I mean, I've had like buttons and all sorts of strange things that didn't relate to anything I was buying. So I found them just a little bit annoying as stuff you've got to throw out. Uh, Carol wraps her covers in tissue paper and ribbons, encloses a business card relating to the item and a handmade tag. That sounds absolutely perfect. That sounds like something... I would feel a bit special opening, but at the same time, there's not a whole lot of stuff to throw out. And the business card is a fantastic idea too. Now, they used to be on Etsy years ago. I don't think people do it anymore, but it was quite a cool thing that what people would do was there was a thread and people would share around if they wanted to cross market each other. So they would send their business card, they would send a bunch of business cards to a few different people. So anytime someone was shipping something out, they would include several different business cards. And it worked best if they were sort of related, but not the same shops, you know, not competitors, but still a similar theme. So I don't know, like, if somebody was let's say it was a kind of steampunk theme someone bought a card in a steampunk design then maybe they would be interested in a shop that made steampunk chokers or knitted steampunk gloves or something if you if you see what i mean and so it meant the customer when they opened it they got not only your business card but a few other people's business cards and when these other people sold as well they included your business card in the package that was a thing i don't know five or six years ago people did that loads and that was pretty cool a nice way of cross promoting everybody but a business card is a really cool thing to add into your box it is something that I've got to buy some more of because I ran out a while ago and I've been a bit lazy with that. So that's a reminder to me I'm going to order some more business cards. Another thing that I found really awesome was uh, many years ago for a friend's wedding, um, we were looking to buy a little handmade gift for them and their <laughs> the story of their romance was the frog prince, um, which sounds wonderful it wasn't wasn't as great as it sounded um they were just she didn't think much of him at all until one time they were out at a party together and she potentially got a little bit tipsy and they had a wee kiss and when they had the kiss she saw him as her prince <laughs> she he turned from a frog into a prince but they're a lovely couple but that that was their their story so i wanted to get some kind of frog prince type thing and i found this shop that had that made um, necklaces with, with the, the, the frog, you know, it was a frog with his little crown on sitting on a love heart. And I just thought that was perfect for her. But what was so lovely was the shop owner, he actually included in 
in the package, he also included a little printout of how he'd made it. So he, he explained the process. It was done with a lot. I can't speak today. It was done with a lot lost wax method. Um, so he explained he had little pictures of himself in his workshop and showing how he carved everything out of wax and then did this and did that and this is how he finished up with a piece and actually when my friends opened this at their at their wedding with all the friends around open and everyone sat around while they read, read out this description and I bet you anybody that's looking for jewellery that went to that wedding would buy off this guy because it's what we've talked about the shop video this was such a personal touch you know it's like it's not just a piece of jewellery we knew how it was made we'd seen pictures of the guy we'd been into his workshop and it just that was something that was a little bit extra special the other thing that can be obviously useful as well as explaining how it's made explain how to care for it if you've got something a little bit different like our needle felting it's not something that people necessarily understand so it's really important to tell them how to care for it like not necessarily banging it in the washing machine yeah I've had people try um, if it's got long hair not brushing not trying to brush the sculpture but how to care for it so a little note of how Rather than say care instructions, because that sounds like mass manufactured things, you know, how to love your item, how to look after it. Um, but yeah, that would be a real useful thing to have in it. Another thing I've seen in packaging that that I've really loved is in a few soap in a few soap shops that I've went to and I've ordered from them, they'll also include slivers of you know, samples, little up and coming scents and different things. And these are lovely little, you know, it's just about the size of a guest room soap or something. But I find these are a lovely little extra because it's related to what you've bought. Cassandra's got it. Grooming tips. Thank you so much. Yes. And grooming tips for what to do with your needle felted sculptures. Yeah, so with the soaps, you're just getting something that's really related. It's not random. It's clearly, if you've bought soaps, you must be interested in soaps. So here, try some different things. And there's been some makeup shops as well that I've used. Um, the, oh, shout out, I'm sure she's still about, the All Natural Face. Um, she was fantastic on Etsy. I have to check her out again. It's a mineral makeup shop and it was just when mineral makeup was just starting and we didn't really understand it that well. Um, but whenever she sent anything out, the samples were fantastic. Um, so, you know, if you bought some eyeshadow, there could be other similar colours in wee samples and things. And what she also did was selling little sample packs as well. It was fantastic with the foundations um, because I have the wonderful Scottish complexion of this kind of blue-white colour that isn't very tanned at any time of the year. So getting a foundation is so difficult. But she let us purchase sample packs so then I could blend my own custom colours of foundation to actually suit myself, um, which was great. But yeah, so if you have something like makeup or soaps or if you were selling sweeties or whatever else, if you have something that that you can do samples of that are relatable and obviously it doesn't cost you too much money like off cuts of the side or something else to be if you like this try this that's perfectly fine that's like advertising that's great um and yes like carol said nice packaging you know with tissue paper and ribbons that just makes it a little bit extra special we all like opening packaging so that's that's a cool thing that I will actually think about in the future because I do think perhaps I don't wrap up my dogs quite as nicely as I should basically I feel when I'm busy I'm too busy to be thinking of doing these things and in the past when I was really quiet I didn't want to spend extra money on getting out these kind of things but now I'm kind of at a level that I, I feel I should be doing something so yes I'm gonna look in I think some nice tissue paper and ribbon for the dogs would be awesome 
uh, yeah, so <laughs> there are cool things you can add in your packaging. Um, so yeah, let's say business cards, grooming tips or how it was made, something about your shop or something about yourself. I mean, it doesn't have to be much. You could put things on the back of a business card and some nice wrapping, but we basically, we don't want to be going absolutely overboard. Something relatable of a similar style or something that the person ordered from you might appreciate rather than just filling it full of <laughs> it's lovely that you want to say thank you to the customer but you're actually if you want to make money as a business then these extras you're going to have to be adding into the price of your item so they're paying for stuff that they didn't want so keep it sensible right i hope that made sense oh i always mess up when i'm trying to change screens and I saw that Cassandra went live during the week. I missed her, unfortunately, but she's she's had a chance to get to see what all this nonsense is about. It's quite an experience. All right. And now the last wee bit, last wee bit here for today. We're just going to have a wee look at Cassandra Hall's Facebook page. And this is, yeah, at Cassandra Hall Paints. Again, like I say, Cassandra Hall also has a YouTube channel, so check her out if you get the chance. Um, if you're on the live stream just now, that is just with hovering over her name, that brings up the three dots. Click on the three dots and there's a visit the channel. But anyway, here we have Cassandra. Um, I've just jumped onto the photos bit because we're just nosy and over photos. And we'll just click through some of these. This is so, that's following a craftsy craftsy tutorial. I haven't looked at craftsy for years. I think I put a tutorial up of making a wolf dog about eight years ago. I really have to go back to that. But I think you've done a great job because skin skin can be hard to do. So I think that looks pretty awesome. So whatever tutorial was pretty cool. And beautiful flowers. That's really, I love the way you've captured the light and just with the strokes on the acrylic gives an idea of the, the light coming in and then just catching the light on the tips of the flowers. That is utterly beautiful, really nice work. And ah, yes, here, and yes, if you go onto her Facebook page as well, it's gonna have links to the videos that she's been making. So. Cassandra's really crafty, so there's whole lots of different things here. I'm trying to see see what we've got, but there's links to whole loads of different things here. Um, videos you can check out. And what are these? Is this the po yeah? Um, I love. She's done some videos on poured acrylic art which looks like so much fun and I would get in such a mess with this but it's great fun to watch and um, just pouring it 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 just gives these wonderful effects and um it's what we we call serendipity because you it's it's like a happy accident you can't control that much what goes on it's very similar um something myself and my mum did years ago was we tried wax painting and I've still got my kit, I'll have to give it another go. And it's awesome fun in that um, you've got this little kind of iron thing and these coloured waxes and you just put coloured waxes all over the iron and then you've got a card, you just iron over the card and the colours all mingle and end up where they like. And if you like it, you stop. If you don't like it, you go back again and you get, you know, they all blend together in a different way. And you have control in that you can do things like I've done some landscapes it's quite good for hills and clouds and you can pop in flowers and things but you can also just be totally abstract it is so much fun um, yeah Cassandra's never heard of wax painting it's the the fancy name I want to say it but I'm not going to spell it but I'll <laughs> I'll find it and link in the group but it's encaustic art 
um, but it is so much fun. Very similar to that, um, literally, except that sort of the hot wax is merging on your iron, and then when you stick it on the on the paper, it's um, it's a shiny card, it, so it doesn't sink in, so it keeps mobile. But the the work people do with it is great as well, but very similar to to that acrylic. And I really have to give that a try sometime. That looks so much fun. And these look like some kind of watercolours, I think. Oh, there was a time-lapse video. I missed that. I'll have to watch that. I love him. He's so bright and the little head tilt. Very, very inquisitive looking. And Cassandra signs her work. That's really something I've got to get practice in doing. <laughs> I was going to say something here that would um, have sounded a little bit rude, so I won't, but he is fantastic. I love that. Um, acrylic again, I think. I'm not an expert. My painting skills are rather limited, but I love him. The the flow you've got from the feathers and stuff and the colours in it, I think he's rather gorgeous. Oh, hi there. This is my mum, Mary Duffy, um, in caustic. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's um, actually, I think, mum, have you got any in caustic paintings up in your shop? I'll see if I can find any. <laughs> yes, you can do the wax painting on fabric, Carol. That gives a lovely, totally different effect it's really quite really quite cool as well I actually learned how to spell there. um I'm gonna have done this and my mum won't have any encaustic in her shop but we'll see um in fact artwork ah yes she does fantastic um so here's some of the more kind of abstracty things. This is um, this is caused by sort of dabbing the iron onto the onto the paper, and you can see how that it peels away and forms interesting effects. And then the same with, and it's just a stamp of a butterfly in the middle and then just the dabbing the iron down and lifting it up causes these kind of really cool effects it, it's really something quite different that would be really difficult to do in any other medium and the final one I really love this as well you can see the skies and then hills and then she's just worked in a wee, a wee stamp there of a bridge over it so they're really they're really great fun to do I won't say easy um, it's not easy to control oops wrong thing it's not the easiest thing in the world to control but if you if you've got the imagination that you can just do things and know when it looks right and know when to stop the colors are so vibrant it's a whole bunch of fun to do um you could if you're having a lucky day get like 20 paintings done in in an hour <laughs> or if you're having a terrible day you can keep on going backwards and forwards with the iron and it just becomes a mess and <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because you just kind of melt it off and you know add more colors start again but some days can be frustrating some days can be awesome but yes they are lovely and the wax colors are so vibrant I keep kind of looking over there because I'm sure my encaustic kit's just through in the kitchen but I don't want to go and try and get it because then I'll realize it's not and it's probably upstairs so I won't do that it's very unprofessional Anyway, back to Cassandra and her owl. I do love him. Um, fabric and some button eyes. They're so simple, but so cute. Uh, what else? Oh, some landscapes. Acrylic, acrylic on a canvas board. He is absolutely lovely. I love the the mountain, the colour of the mountains, and the different distance is that um anywhere 
anywhere in particular or is it just out of your imagination? It looks very similar to somewhere I went for a walk, um, the, the Green Up Cut it's called, where you're right up in the hills and there's some water reservoirs and then as you walk around you see right over Greenock and right down right down the Clyde and it's very beautiful and that looks kind of similar to that but I'm sure it's not because I know you're not in Scotland but that's a beautiful painting and I love the detail in the sky and everything I mean, this is great fun to poke about here Cassandra I didn't realize you were so talented <laughs> Well, I knew you were talented, but I hadn't seen that many of your paintings before. And another still life. That looks yummy. <laughs> You're very good with your light. I love that. Um, it was from a picture, but you can't remember the place. Oh, it's, it is a beautiful place, though. <laughs> it might well have been Scotland. Oh, well, it does. I won't lie. It does look very Scottish. Um, it could be anywhere though. I'm sure there's there's a lot of areas like that in a lot of places in the world. Um, kind of North America way as well. I've seen beautiful mountains and trees, but it it does look a bit Scottish. <laughs> what else have we got here? Oh, that's a bit sky on fire for sure. That is awesome. I bet that was fun to paint those colours as well. You need to do more time-lapse art paintings. I love these. I know they take forever to do, but I love seeing them. But that is really nice. You're very talented. Um, yeah, I love the colours on that. And another sunset. That is really cool too. I love the road going over into the setting sun. It's hanging in your living room. Fantastic. I it's totally good to be able to <laughs> decorate your house with works of art. I actually have to get my Wednesday Adams up. I, I plan to, to frame her and put her, her up about my house as well. Oh, and for a completely different, different speed, but I love that too. That's just so gentle, just a, a crow or some kind of bird in silhouette. That's really cool. Thomas the Tank Engine, <laughs> fantastic. That is so well done. Too far too nice for just a children's character. But it's great to practice on different things because it say so it's all good practice for different shading and yeah, well done. And Ariel from the Little Mermaid. <laughs> She's so good. You got her face perfectly because faces are so difficult the slightest thing out of place and it's just beautiful ah the bird in the trees from a photo that she thought was a fantastic shot I completely agree it's lovely it just just perfectly how let's go back to this just perfectly how it's framed just the bird sitting there in the center it's just sort of wistful isn't it very nice and perfectly captured Too nice to, oh oh here we go there's a bigger version of this yeah that's awesome too yeah really cool <laughs> someone asked can you do that and I was like I don't know let me see that's the best way to challenge yourself to do stuff that you wouldn't normally do and then <laughs> the, the little mermaid yeah to do this kind of stuff and then you just if you challenge yourself and push yourself like that, then you can actually really grow in your skill at doing the things that you normally do. And Rodney B's in the house. Hey, Rodney. Um, I just stupidly, I thought Rodney's live stream was in a couple of hours time. So I put my live stream on at the same time and we overlapped. So sorry about that, Rodney. But everyone needs to get over and check him out as well. Rodney's got awesome tech reviews and some advice for YouTube and everything. So I know we've got Cassandra and Sharon are YouTubers and definitely helps to 
get in the wee community and get to know everybody. So if you'll check each other out, that sounds dodgy, but check each other's channels out. Um, and yeah, good to see you, Rodney. How did your live stream go? Uh, let's nosy some more. Little little houses by the hills this is so cute but also i'm sorry this would make me chuckle as well because the the lineup of of the windows and the door just make it look like the house is just a little bit shocked as well but it's a beautiful gentle landscape the yellow rose was the first thing you ever painted or did i miss a yellow rose or am I missing a yellow rose? I love stags. That's that's brilliant. Antlers are a nightmare to make. I did. Um, it does look like a face. Cause I'm glad you didn't take offence. But I just wanted to laugh. It's so cute. A house going. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, stags, that was, talking of challenges, I challenged myself um, to make a stag, a needle felted stag a couple of times and those antlers, it, it's fun and they they have turned out okay, but that's something I'll have to do a tutorial on sort of nearer Christmas time again because they are great fun. Um, between the pink rose and the, oh, doll, stupid me. So this was the first thing that Cassandra ever painted. It's a yellow rose. And that is a great job because it's not really a clear picture at all, is it? From what I can see there to get all the detail in the frills of the petals. I believe um, a rose was one of the first things I did when I was at school. I remember this. It was embroidery which I don't really do embroidery, I do cross stitch, but we're doing embroidery and I remember that my embroidery of a rose got shown up in the exhibition and I always thought, oh, I, you know, it must have been dead good and everything. And then finally, not that many years ago, I finally saw my, my rose and I hadn't even finished it, it was rubbish. <laughs> but I remembered it being awesome. I, I think what I was remembering was what I meant the rose to look like. It didn't work out like that at all. It was terrible. That was about three years ago. Well, Cassandra, I think you started awesome and you've well, you've continued to get better. I think your your light and everything's got so much better, your roses, but I don't that was great to start with. Have a nosy at some more. <laughs> oh that lamb is adorable. <laughs> That is brilliant. I love his wee expression. That just popped out and made me laugh. <laughs> Mum still has my rose. <laughs> well, Mum, if you want to shame me, you're welcome to send a picture <laughs> of it. Oh, he's cute. That is really awesome. Do you do like Christmas cards and stuff, Cassandra? I think that would look really brilliant on a Christmas card. The owner's named the the the, the lamb radar because of his huge ears. I can see that he was barely holding them up. That is, I should spend longer on things so you can actually mention what <laughs> what we're talking about. But yes, I can see those lugs are impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why that that is brilliant. I had a a commission for a, a lamb. It was a Jacob sheep lamb, and it was absolutely lovely. Um, it was it was a friend of the person, and the guy was a Franciscan monk, and the sheep had been his pet, and she wanted a she wanted a little felt sculpture of it and that was I was so pleased with how it turned out it was great fun to make yes Cassandra there is there's a bit of lag in in live streams which totally makes sense I mean I, we have to speak to Rodney about how to reduce the, the lag because his live stream super fast but basically all the time it takes for the internet to, to 
upload everything I'm saying and send it off and things, there is a bit of a lag between what you type. Well, there's a bit of a lag between what I'm saying and you guys getting to hear it. And then there's a bit of a lag lag for your comments to show up. So we do have a bit, a bit of a gap. We can't, although I can talk to you guys, I can't talk quite in real time. But it's cool. It's, it's working mainly. I just sound a little bit insane. And she said this little guy was was on a card. He is very cute. Oh, see, if I did just looked a little bit further, I could see that she is doing cards. And I think they're really lovely. Because that just that little handmade extra. And we're using ultra low latency settings in YouTube. Um, if it's something I had to change, I probably am not. In Rodney, is that in, in YouTube itself or is that in OBS? I would want to do that in and probably you're gonna say I should also plug in my my internet and not be using Wi-Fi to <laughs> to stream this because I do have super fast broadband but the cables the other side of the room so it's a bit easier just just to go wireless um so yeah I would probably everything would work just a little bit better if I actually set it up properly Just have a last wee look. Ah, it's on YouTube. Okay, I'll I'll look that up, Rodney. See, I'm I'm getting coached in the middle of my live stream. <laughs> but Rodney's a good guy, so if you need help with any of your, your YouTube things, he is the one to ask. And his live streams are just before mine on a Sunday. Not just after as I thought. Ah, oh, Rodney's using Wi-Fi as well. Okay, that is cool. I, I thought it might be the internet speed that was bothering things, but I mean, I my internet speed's pretty fast. I don't have a whole lot of lag. It's, it's not like poor, poor Brian G's who's using steam-powered internet sometimes, and his live streams are awesome. So yeah, I should have thought of that. Art is never finished, only abandoned. That is so, it's so true, but Leonardo da Vinci, yeah, I'm not even going to argue with his quotes. If that's one of his, then yeah, he's quite right. Um, but yeah, I do feel feel that, that maybe we need to abandon them sometimes a bit more often. It's so easy to just keep on fiddling at things and never see it perfect. One thing I do with 3D and 2D work is when I get to a point where I think I'm just totally fiddling with it for the sake of fiddling with it. I put it away on the other side of the room at a distance so I can only see it from a distance and then a couple of days of walking past it, if I'm not from that distance seeing stuff that annoys me, then it's finished. You know, if it looks good from, if it, if I don't hate it from sitting where someone else would display it, then it's done. Of course, when it's right up at my eyeballs, I'm going to see imperfections. I need to set up before I stream ultra low latency. So <laughs> I will do that. Yes, boss. So next time we'll we'll speed up the comments and you guys can let me know if I if I did it right. Okay, I think I think I've had a lovely snoop through Cassandra's page. Thank you so much for letting me look at it, Cassandra. You do great work and you should totally do some more films of your painting because I think that's gorgeous work. And keep an eye out for her next needle felting video. Um, when do you think that one's going to be going up, Cassandra, your little taiko? Yeah, I'm going to let the cat out of the dog. Uh, cat out of the dog? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's a terrible slip. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag, but Cassandra was quite quite possibly making a little sculpture based on her own little dog, which if you pop over to her channel, you'll see some of some of him, anything with Tycho in it, and he is absolutely awesome and <laughs> so excited she's shouting. The video will be up on Wednesday of Cassandra working on that. So everybody don't forget to subscribe to her and turn on the notifications so you get to see when this next needle felting video is up because I think her videos have been awesome and I'm actually really excited to see how she's finished off these last wee bits. She's dealt with all the difficult bits like 
the, the ears seem to happen without any tears at all so she's done absolutely awesome so everyone check her out on Wednesday and check out the old videos I'll link to these when this video uploads properly um, in the replay but right guys unless you have any questions I think I think that'll do us for tonight I'll get off and get my tea but it's been awesome chatting to you guys it's great checking out your shops your your pages and your shops don't forget if any of you want me to check out your art pages or to do a review on your Etsy shop then pop over to Pam's Felt and Friends on Facebook there should be a link in the description below and I've got a couple of threads on there you can put up your requests and I just work through you all and get a good look at everything that you're making I'm just doing it one at a time um, where I can especially the Etsy the Etsy shops I do about one of them a month because it just it takes me a good few hours to go through all your shops get ideas for the SEO and everything but totally love doing it um guys thank you so much for joining me um yeah it's been awesome I should have gone on to full face it there I'm, I'm such an expert um it's been awesome hanging out with you guys and I'll catch you next time